1.12 phase changes. You can read this outline on your own, but let's move on to the lesson. First, let's talk about heating-related phase changes. Heating-related phase changes are also known as endothermic phase changes. And what that means is heat is gained to overcome or break apart the attractor forces. And as a result, that pushes the particles apart from each other. All right? So when heat is gained by, for example, a solid, it's breaking apart these attractive forces and it's become a liquid. Liquid will gain the heat and it's used to overcome these attractive forces, break them apart, and push the particles apart far enough to become a gas. So there you go. Um, in addition to heat being gained, potential energy is increasing as a result. And um, as a result, potential energy and heat increasing, you have more distance between the particles. All right? Um, so uh, all I need to know is heat and endothermic or heating-related phase changes um, Basically, heat is being gained, potential energy is, in, sorry, heat is increasing, potential energy is increasing, and as, as a result, because more, there's more potential energy, there's more distance between the particles. So let's see how that works with solids, liquids, and gases. For a solid, um, for a solid, if you gain heat, the potential energy is increasing as a result. And because there's more potential energy, you'll have more distance between the particles to become a liquid. All right, so just to summarize from solid to liquid, when you gain heat, you gain potential energy. And when you gain potential energy, you have more distance between the particles and your phase change to become a liquid. All right, now from, in going from a liquid to a gas, the liquid gains heat and as a result, it gains potential energy. And because it gains potential energy, you have a greater distance between these particles, um, so much so that becomes a gas. All right, so let's just summarize what I just did. Um, for each of these three. If a solid um, gains heat, it gains potential energy. And because it gains potential energy, there's more distance between the particles. So you become a liquid. So in other words, um, when you add potential energy and add heat as a result to a solid, the distance increases and it becomes a liquid as a phase change. All right, with the liquid, when you gain heat, you also add potential energy. And because you add potential energy, you increase the distance between the particles and the liquid phase changes phases to a gas where there's more distance. So here you have the least distance, you add potential energy and heat, then the distance increases to a liquid slightly more. Then a liquid has slightly more distance, but not as much as gases. So liquids, you add heat and potential energy, then it increases distance between gas to become uh, gas particles because you're breaking the attract attractive forces in each one of these. So endothermic phase changes are as follows. If the potential energy increases, the distance between the particles increases because you're adding heat to it. All right, add heat, you add potential energy. You add potential energy, the distance between the particles increases from solid to liquid to gas. Because solid is the least distance, liquid has the um, has a little bit of a greater distance and gas is greatest distance. Now we have the opposite of heating-related phase changes, which are cooling-related phase changes. Now, in cooling-related or exothermic phase changes, um, that's the reverse of heating-related or endothermic phase changes. In this case, for exothermic or cooling-related phase changes, you have heat loss pushing the particles closer together. All right, you can think of heat as what's holding the particles apart, but when you lose the heat, they're going to suck in and become closer together. All right. So heat loss pushes the particles closer together. All right, and that's because when you lose heat, you're also losing potential energy. And as a result of losing potential energy, less potential energy means less distance between the particles. So just to summarize for exothermic or cooling-related phase changes, if you lose the heat, you lose potential energy. And if you lose potential energy, you have less distance between the particles. All right, so let's start with the um, particles with the greatest distance and go down to the ones with the least distance. Since in cooling-related, we're losing distance or potential energy or heat between the particles. All right, let's say we have a gas. gas is, the gas is the phase with the greatest distance between the particles. Remember, if we lose heat, we lose potential energy. And as a result of losing potential energy, we lose distance between the particles. So gas, when you lose heat, you lose potential energy. And when you lose potential energy, you lose distance. So much so that it comes closer together and becomes a liquid. Because these have less distance between them than gases do. All right, in going from liquid to solid, if you lose heat from this, you lose potential energy. And if you lose potential energy, you... Um, lose distance between the particles, so much so that a liquid changes phase to a solid.
All right, so just to summarize what I just did, gases are the greatest distance between them. If you lose heat, you lose potential energy. You lose potential energy, you lose distance between the particles so much so that it changes phase to a liquid. For a liquid, if you lose heat, you lose potential energy. And if you lose potential energy, um, you lose distance between the particles so much so that a liquid changes phase to a solid. So to summarize, exothermic phase changes have potential energy decreasing because heat is lost, and as a result of the potential energy decreasing, um, distance between the particles decreases. So just to summarize this really fast, um, and going from a gas to a liquid to a solid, it's, there are exothermic phase changes because um, you're losing heat, so you're losing potential energy. And because you lose potential energy, the distance between the particles decreases. All right, so just remember endothermic means you gain heat, potential energy increases from solid to liquid to gas. And because the potential energy increases from solid to liquid to gas, the distance between the particles increases. The reverse is exothermic phase changes where um, you lose heat, so you lose potential energy and, if, uh, and going from gas to liquid to solid. And because potential energy decreases from gas to liquid to solid, um, you're also getting the particles between, the distance between the particles decreasing from gas to liquid to solid. All right, now let's move on to our six phase changes. So we have two categories. Remember, we have heating-related or endothermic phase changes and exothermic or cooling-related phase changes. So let's start with the endothermic or heating-related phase changes. So let's remember endothermic or heating-related phase changes from solid to liquid to gas involve heat being gained and therefore potential energy increasing. When potential energy increases, so does the distance between the particles. All right? So... Um, Endothermic or heating-related phase changes involve melting, evaporation, and sublimation. I want you to remember these three. And melting is from solid to liquid. All right? Evaporation is from liquid to gas. And sublimation, I want you to remember, is from solid to gas. And these are all heating-related or endothermic phase changes because um, in all three of these, you have um, heat being gained and therefore potential energy increasing. And therefore, distance between the particles is increasing from... For melting from solid to liquid, the distance between the particles is increasing. For evaporation from liquid to gas, the distance between the particles is increasing. For sublimation from solid to gas, the distance between the particles is increasing by a lot. So these are all heating-related or endothermic phase changes because the distance between the particles is indeed increasing. All right. Um, and exothermic or cooling-related phase changes, let's remember... For exothermic or cooling relay phase changes, heat is being lost. And because heat is being lost, potential energy is decreasing. And because potential energy is decreasing, the distance between the particles is decreasing from gas to liquid to solid. And these are the three exothermic phase changes I want you to memorize. Freezing, condensation, and deposition. Freezing is from liquid to solid. Condensation is from gas to liquid. And deposition is from gas to solid. All right? And... Um, what you need to know here is these three are known as exothermic or cooling-related phase changes because all three of these involve a decrease in um, distance between the particles because heat is being lost and therefore potential energy is decreasing or being lost, in other words. All right, freezing, we have liquid to solid. Remember, from, in going from liquid to solid, the distance between the particles is decreasing, so that's why it is exothermic or cooling-related. Condensation, in going from gas to liquid, the distance between the particles is decreasing, so therefore... It is cooling-related or exothermic deposition. For going from gas to solid, the distance between the particles is decreasing by a lot. So therefore, we know that um, it's cooling-related or exothermic. So this is how you know. Remember, freezing condensation deposition involve um, particles being decreasing in terms of their distance. So these three are um, exothermic. And these three involve increase in distance between the particles. So they're endothermic. And just memorize what these six phase changes mean so that you are prepared for them when they come up on the regions. Now let's talk about representing phase changes. You can just do this very easily. You can represent phase changes using particle diagrams. And in, for phase changes, you use two particle diagrams. You use one particle diagram for each phase, like one box for each phase, and you draw an arrow in between to demonstrate that it's indeed changing phase from one to another. The arrow shows that it's changing. All right, so we, uh, we already know how to draw particle diagrams for solids, liquids, and gases individually. So now we just have to incorporate them into representing phase changes. First, let's go for the phase changes that involve solids and liquids. Solids are drawn like a cube like this, and liquids are drawn slightly more spaced out. Solids are cube-like, liquids are non-geometric. So 
For the endothermic or heating relay phase changes, it's melting going from solid to liquid. And how we know that this is indeed melting or endothermic um, or heating related is that we have increase in distance between the particles, meaning you have a heat gain and a potential energy gain. Therefore, the distance between the particles is increasing for melting. For freezing, we have the reverse, where you go from a liquid, which is slightly more spaced out, to a solid, which is closer together. Freezing, let's remember, is an exothermic related phase change or a cooling related phase change because you have potential energy decreasing, therefore the heat is lost, and therefore we have um, the distance between the particles decreasing. All right, for um, evaporation condensation, we have a liquid and a gas. To go from liquid, we have slightly spaced out, to gas, which is far spaced out. So evaporation is from liquid, which is slightly spaced out, to gas, which is very far spaced out. Or we know this is endothermic for evaporation because the distance between the particles is increasing. In reverse, going from gas to liquid, it's condensation because, um, because the particles are coming closer together, therefore the distance between the particles is decreasing, and that's why we know it's exothermic for condensation. All right, gas to liquid. Evaporation is liquid to gas. All right, S for sublimation, we have solid to gas drawn like so, and we know it's endothermic because you have heat um, being gained there for potential energy increasing and distance increasing. Deposition, we have gas to solid. So there we go. Um, so just to review all six of these, from solid to liquid is melting like this. From liquid to solid is freezing like this. From liquid to gas is evaporation like this. From gas to liquid is condensation like this. From solid to gas, it's sublimation like this, and from gas to solid, it's deposition like this. All right, so just remember solid is cube-like, liquid is slightly more spaced out, and gas is very far spaced out. And obviously, you just need to remember what two phases are involved in each phase change, and that's all summarized here. All right, this will look very confusing, but don't worry about it. I just told you on the slide, you can just break down the lesson piece by piece to make it easier for yourself. All right, and these are guided practice questions. You can do these on your own. They're very simple. Um, very straightforward, and please complete the questions in this slide for Friday, October 3rd. Thank you very much.